this little uh, table saw started out life as a uh, Harbor Freight uh, wet tile cutting saw. Came with a diamond blade. Uh, I think it was a maybe a seven inch diamond blade. And it was bought originally uh, some years ago to uh, finish a tiling project in my uh, kitchen. And uh, once that was finished, it uh, went on a shelf and uh, uh, hadn't been seen any use for uh, several years. Uh, I don't recall what I paid for it originally, but I do know that Harbor Freight still sells this saw. Uh, I think their street price without being on sale is 67 or $69, something like that. Um, and uh, it's really a pretty good buy for that for that amount of money. Uh, I had, as you can see, it's sitting on this uh, DeWalt contractor saw, which had been my uh, uh, main saw I've been using for a while. Um, it's a 10-inch uh, saw. It's a good saw. It does the job, but it has a couple of things I don't like about it. One is it's not terribly accurate. Um, you know the the table isn't real flat, and uh, it uh, and the other thing I don't like about it is it's incredibly noisy. I mean, it is really, really loud. And then the final thing I don't care for it so much is that uh, it has this uh, exhaust on the back, which shoots the sawdust straight out the back and gets all over the garage. I've got a hose in there, which I typically hook it up to my vacuum and run the vacuum when I'm cutting wood with it, which even adds more to the noise. So all in all. You know, for quick cuts, it just isn't that convenient. So I pulled down this little Harbor Freight saw and uh, got to looking at it and uh, figured out that it wouldn't be too hard to convert it to a table saw. Now, uh, a couple of caveats. First of all, there is no height adjustment at all. So that blade, this is a seven and a quarter inch blade. It sticks up about one and three eighths inches above the table, which a, that's going to be the maximum depth of cut you'll be able to get with it. But B, it doesn't matter how thick your wood is, you're never going to be able to change that height. So it does pose some risk that on thinner pieces of material, that blade's going to be sticking up quite a bit above your work. So you have to be extra conscious to uh, keep your fingers away from it. Uh, it. You can do angle cuts with it. This table has a couple of knobs on the bottom, which hopefully you can see there. You loosen those knobs and this whole table will then tilt up or down. Uh, I rarely ever have to do an angular cut and, and to date I've never used that at all. A um, couple of things I like about it. Um, first of all, it, it's extremely quiet. I mean, it just doesn't make a lot of noise. You know, I'll turn it on. See, compared to most saws, that, that really is pretty quiet. So if you needed a small table saw for an apartment or something, I think it would be ideal. The other thing is, it seems the motor turns at 3600 RPM, which seems to be plenty for this blade. And uh, it, it seems to have plenty of power. I've cut wood, you know, up to uh, an inch thick with it, maple, an inch thick, and it, it works fine. Now, this blade I've got is a pretty thin curf blade. It's a, I think it's a, a Diablo. It's a Harbor, it, it came from Home Depot. It's a 60 tooth blade, thin curf, uh, gives extremely smooth cuts. I've used this to cut through aluminum. It'll actually, I've cut aluminum an eighth of an inch thick with it, and it does it effortlessly without much noise, uh, no kickback or anything. So uh, the other downside to this saw is that it doesn't have any slot in it for a, a miter gauge. Uh, <clears throat> so what I've done is I did make a, uh, a sled for it. So this sled slides on here like that. And rather than ride in a guide, it has uh, it has two uh, UHMW ultra high molecular weight uh, slippery plastic runners on either side that fit on either that go down either side of the uh, a metal table, and by fitting those carefully, uh, it does slide nicely, and there's absolutely no play in that whatsoever. So with this little sled, uh, you can cross cut pieces. Now this takes. This is made with 3 8 inch thick particle board, so the maximum depth of cut I can do on this is about an inch. Uh, most of my stuff is 3 quarters or less, so that's fine. Um, the other thing I did to, uh, <coughs> to do ripping was I attached this piece of uh, aluminum channel 
on the back. It just simply has screws that, go, that screw into the uh, skirt on that uh, steel tabletop. And then the um, fence I made is right here. Uh, it has a, uh, a square, flat, uh, square headed uh, nut on it or screw on it that goes into that uh, slot and then this knob tightens down and that and you can use that on either side of the tip of the, of the saw of the blade uh, wider stuff over here narrower more conventional stuff over here and that works great um, the one other caveat uh, that I probably should have mentioned earlier on is that the uh, and I and I'll have a there's a second part to this video which I'll add on here but basically that's the adapter that uh, lets you use this blade the adapter that comes with the saw uh, fits a uh, diamond tile cutting blade, which has a one inch hole in the center. Uh, and it needs to be a uh, 5 8 inch for your typical woodworking blade. Now I had a metal lathe, I was able to make a new adapter and uh, fit over the uh, uh, motor shaft to hold this saw blade and was able to work fine. Uh, as I say, there's a second part to this video and I'll get into that next. So this is the uh, trickiest part of the conversion. This, this is the uh, shaft on the motor uh, and it is, uh, it looks like it's a 14 millimeter diameter which uh, translates to about 0.55 inches, a little over half an inch uh, in uh, <clears throat> uh, standard measurement. And uh, then this is the um, this is the adapter that comes with it uh, for use for using a tile saw blade and you can see uh, this fits right over that shaft uh, of the motor but this this part of the arbor right here uh, is designed to fit a one inch diamond blade for cutting tile unfortunately what you need for um, a wood saw blade, an eight, seven and a quarter or eight inch wood saw blade is you need a five eighths inch arbor. So you have to have a way to make your own adapter for this. Now, if you have a metal lathe or you have a friend who uh, has access to a metal lathe then you can make your own adapter and that works quite well. Uh, that allows you to go ahead then and uh, uh, just fit a uh, standard saw blade on there uh, with a 5 8 inch hole. The uh, piece that goes over the outside uh, you can reuse, that's the part that came with the saw originally. Um, <clears throat> and from there if you can figure out this part then you've got it made. Uh, if you don't have access to a metal lathe or a way to turn a new uh, adapter to fit a standard saw blade, um, you might be able to fabricate something with tubing and a uh, a washer uh, I'd be real careful with that but you you might be able to work something like that out however if you can get past this hurdle uh, then you've got yourself uh, you're well on the road to having yourself a nice little table saw I do want to emphasize that uh, this is the uh, this is the plastic blade guard that comes originally with the saw to cover the diamond blade I would uh, highly, highly recommend that you reinstall this guard uh, once you've put the um, uh, wood cutting saw blade in place. I realize that the chances you're putting your hand under there may be slim, but believe me, if it can be done, sooner or later you will do it. And uh, that uh, you want to make sure and put that under there so that uh, you don't wind up losing a finger. Um, I also wanted to mention that this arrangement causes virtually, as you can see here on the table underneath there, virtually all of the sawdust from this uh, cutting operation <clears throat> gets routed down and out the back side of here onto the surface below. So you don't get a lot of sawdust uh, uh, being spread around the shop uh, from this little saw.